All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. We're going to go ahead and change it up today from the fishing scene and do a little snowmobile maintenance, specifically working on a 2003 Articat ZL550 liquid cooled. This project will stay true for pretty much every make of Articat and several other makes of uh, snowmobiles as well, as well as ATVs. You know, it'll be the same deal to hook into a power source for different reasons. We are specifically heating up a heated helmet shield wire today. And what we had to do was get in to access our power point on this model. Is we remove the cowlin underneath the handlebars. We did that by removing four Phillips screws. Okay. One on, up here on this bar. You can see right here was this corner. One over there. Okay, then you've got one here and one on the other side. It's just four simple screws. Then we backed off the nuts that went on to our key switch and our choke cable. Okay, and we're just leaving them here. Make sure you don't lose this metal ring. Okay, it goes in front of this little blocker switch. Blocker here to keep the switch out and keeps it from turning on you all the way around once it's in there. Okay, and just let you choke sit over here and chill out okay it can't pull back in don't worry about it once it's out just let it hang out and for us we had to get in here because our power is right here see this plug that they give us and i was able to poke around at the auto store and in the uh, auto store say at a napa somewhere like that over in their trailer section this is an extension for a trailer a two-wire trailer and it's the same exact plug okay so i'm able just to cut one end off leaving wires that i can use it for another project and that's how we're going to tap in now for our heated shield wire you want to buy one a couple important things to remember here and it matters and i'll tell you why you want one with a fuse you got to have an inline fuse if you wire this up without a fuse and have a short somewhere, it'll burn your sled down, okay? You have to have a fuse, and it's a 2-amp fuse, a 1.5 or a 2-amp. This cord was made to hook directly to a battery. Just cut the ends off. We're going to splice it into that cord the right way. I'll show you how. Also, you need a female end. Some cords you're going to buy are going to have a male end like this, okay? Now, this is a short extension we like to use. This goes into the helmet and stays in the helmet. When we get on the sled, we simply clip these together, off we go. This part stays on the sled, this stays on the helmet. If you have one with a male connector, your sled's running, you're not thinking, you hop off your sled, it doesn't even need to be running if it has a battery. But you unplug your helmet, this cord falls down here, touches that metal, it's going to blow your fuse. If you don't have a fuse, it's going to catch your sled on fire. So make sure it has this female end, okay? This, if it falls, it ain't going to matter. It can't ground out and touch anything. So don't worry about that. Okay, that's real important. So now what we've got to do, because we splice this, cut it off and we're going to splice it, there's a couple ways to do this. I have this nice kit. And what this is, is it's a shrink tube. Okay, it's a whole tube is shrinkable. These blue strips, okay, those are adhesive. That will melt against the casing and glue this so moisture can't get in. That gray center bit, okay, that's solder. That will melt and actually solder these wires together for us. That's your best bet. If you don't have those, go to a shrink tube crimp style. You'll put these wires, push them together, give them a twist, slide this over it crimp it down and then heat it up so this shrinks and then to make it a step better go over it with a shrink tube to help waterproof it better because that doesn't have the adhesive in it if you can get these just get these okay they work good so that's our first bit we've got to go ahead and splice these wires and get these soldered together so let's get this going First things first, we're going to want a big piece of shrink. And I think it'll fit over both of these when I'm done. If it don't, I'll cut it back off. 
with the scissors, okay? But I'm hoping it will. It's one of them things that you're just doing by the fly. And bear with me, guys. I'm in Maine, and it is zero degrees out right now. I mean, it's cold. So these things are probably going to take a... Give me a little bit of trouble melting and sealing and all that because it's just so damn cold. Not to mention my hands are only working half right, so bear with me. Slide them solder ends right down on there. Okay, we'll go red to red and just take and leave them. Most of the time you twist your wires. Don't twist them. Leave them loose and kind of stab them inside one another. Okay, wiggle them around and get them to go right together like that. Big old bird's nest, okay? Then kind of pinch them, give them a twist. Okay, and then that's what you'll have. We'll slide this up over it. Oop, we've got a straggler. Make sure you get all the wires inside. Even one little straggler sticking out like that, it's going to... Uh, ground on something and cause you a big old headache. Okay, come on, baby. We lost our other one, but that's okay. One wire right there being a pain in the butt. Okay, there we go. Center that solder right up in the middle, okay? And then what I'm going to do, hopefully, is just take my lighter. And the first thing I want to do is get that solder, okay? Now that's going to want to sag, so I'm going to support it. And we're just going to heat this up until we see that solder melt into our wires. Hopefully this will get hot enough out here. It might not. I see it starting to go now. Okay, see it running down them wires? Hope you guys can see that. There we go. It got good. Now we're going to come out here. We're going to shrink this tube, and you'll watch that adhesive really kind of squish out as it seals. And what it does is it'll get shiny and tell you that it's uh, melted in there. Okay. Now, don't pull on it at this point. Let it cool. Now what I'm going to do, once I think it's cooled enough, is I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to heat it from the other side where it's so cold out. If you guys are in a warmer area, you won't have to do this step here on the other side. But And again, I'm just watching that blue adhesive. When I see that smush out like it has on these ends, I know I've got it. Okay, I'm in good shape right there. That one's good. Let that all cool. And now you've got a good soldered connection. Okay, that's soldered right together. You can see that solder went right down in the wires good. The adhesive in here has adhered good. You can tug on it and you know she's safe. And we've got this shrink tube that we're going to slide right up over all this when we're done. Well, let's jump in here and we'll grab this other one. Okay, get the same deal. Just kind of wiggle it around and get them wires to pull. Already messed up. You know what I got to do? I'm going to bring this back a good three quarters to one turn. That way when I twist, I don't leave my wires spun and kinked. Okay. I 
Just kind of twist that around the best you can. Same deal. Get that in so that solder is right over the center. So it's catching wires going this way and this way. You know what I mean? See my fingers? You want the solder right in the middle right there. Once you've got it, support it on both ends. Start heating her up. And you can already see. If you watch the wires, you'll see them start turning silver as the solder flows into them. And there it goes. See that solder running down? Running good right over here. See it? That's enough for that side. I'll flip it over. And the top side isn't melted good. We'll flip it over and get that. But that bottom side, I can see it better than you guys can on film. It's uh, sealed up good. She's already ran. And like I said, be careful you don't tug it. When the solder goes dull, it's cooled enough that you can go ahead and flip it over. You ain't going to worry about anything loosening up. Now I'm just going to heat that bottom side. Nice. And there we have it. Okay. And that's a good waterproof connection right there. Don't mind the soot from my lighter. I had to use a tip. It's so cold. We'll wipe that off. Once it cools down, it ain't burning me. Okay, but now we're sitting pretty. I'm going to pause you guys for a second while I go grab a little bit of tape. All right, I've just grabbed a little bit of black tape. And I'm just going to put this over this red end, which is a power source, the hot side just as some extra insulation to uh, combat chafage. Snowmobiles, we go down rough trails, it's bouncing and rattling constantly, and uh, things rub together and it can cause a mess. Don't be afraid to put a little extra effort into sealing it up. Now we're gonna come back with this big shrink that I put on right over all that, okay? We want our black wire on the bottom so we got to get this positioned right. Come right up like that. Grab the heat gun. And like I said, this is extra protection here. This is really not necessary. You don't have to do this, but... This is my boy's sled, and the last thing I want is for him to have trouble on the trail or have everything catch on fire on him. You know what I mean? It's, a, it's important to do it right. So there we have it. Okay, yank on that. It's a good tight connection. We're not worried about nothing. Okay, there's a plug right into our sled. We've got the fuse that I'm going to position... right up in here in his handlebar pad this is a velcro if i had this positioned under here we'd have to take this cowling off if he blew the fuse i'm going to position it so the fuse is right under this pad so if he ever has an issue it's real easy for us to get to okay but now all i've got to do is plug this into this connection and we're all powered up it's as simple as that so i'm going to take this off figure out I'm gonna have him come out that side over there so I think what I'll do okay, put that right up in there like so okay wrap this around I'll just 
just tuck all this right up in here. And that'll plug in right there. I might have to cut a little channel out of that foam to get this to lay in here flat. I'm gonna have to check. But I want his cord coming out right there so he can hook up. Okay. That's good there. Get this wrapped around tight. Okay, you see it's making a little bulge. I'm gonna have to get in here with a knife and just cut that foam a little bit for that uh, fuse to lay into. I don't have to, you know, maybe that bump wouldn't bother some people, but it's going to bother me. Okay, so what I'm going to do... This stuff is brittle anyway. I'm just going to cut out a little area. Gotta be real pretty. Just a little something, something to relieve the uh, space. Don't go all the way through because there is wires behind there. Okay, see guys, something like that. going to give that somewhere to sit. I'm just going to go a little wider. Should fit that good now. Yeah, see, that's gonna fit right in there nice. I'll go ahead and make a little wire channel. Coming right this way. And simple like. sit in. This can come down in here and plug right in. And we're going to be set. I like it. And what I'll do is just put a piece of tape over that to hold it there while we get it positioned right. Let me go ahead and pause you guys real quick. I'm going to grab that piece of tape. Alright, I went ahead and cleaned that up. Got a nice little pocket here where the fuse sits in. I've taped it over here to hold it the length I want it hanging out for him. Now I'm just going to finish putting a little piece of tape to hold this here where I want it. So I'm not fighting with it while I get this cover back on. It's the only purpose for this. Around like that. Now the 
if that's in there. If we ever have any trouble, I'll just be able to slip this up, change this fuse, and slip it back in like that. Okay, and this is just going to make a loop and sit right here underneath there. We'll go ahead and we want to put dielectric grease on this connection. That's a must. Anytime you're dealing with moisture, Okay, dielectric grease, specifically made for electrical connections. And what you want to do is just take that female part, fill it right full. Take the male, fill the end of that peg, and give them a good coating. Don't worry about using too much, okay? It acts like a gasket. And I also go right around this edge where that seals. Come in here and squirt a little bit in the female side of that. This stops corrosion, stops moisture from getting in. Now we're going to make this connection. And this is going to be hot. Be all powered up, ready to go. Actually, I, gotta, I want to make a twist here first. Got that. And then we'll plug it up. Make sure it's pushed all the way on. Which we're not. Still go some more. There we go. There we go. That's done. Go ahead and slap this cover back on. What stays out? That stays out. Just get this side the best you can, get the other side, and come back and just keep working it back and forth. And you'll get it. sticking out right here okay and that's going to plug into his helmet when he's ready it's got a keeper on it it's what that little tabs for it's got a keeper right here so it don't pull out and this end twists and locks into his helmet but like i said that will stay on his helmet that doesn't uh stay on the snowmobile because it grounds it out and it'll just blow your fuse but there we have it that's all powered up so now I'm going to go ahead, we're going to come back and get our cowling back on. Make sure that none of these wires on your key switch, make sure you haven't loosened anything up messing with it. Grab our cowling here. So you can put the choke through. Got a flat side so it only comes in here one way. There we go. I'll start working this over everything. Poke our key switch through. Don't forget that metal ring back there, guys, on that key switch. Key's the trickiest one to get in. A little trick, you can put the key in it once you can and use it to help you guide it through. Like so. There we go. And 
now it's just a matter of turning it till you find the correct spot where it pops in. Of course, it's going to be stubborn. Got a flat spot right there on the top, and it's lined right up with the key. Okay. And what happened is I just felt the wire come off. Oh, it didn't come off, but it definitely loosened up. There we go. Now what I'm gonna do? Now I can put my key in here and help position it where it's going to go. There we go. All right. I'll get this nut on. Make sure you're on and off is lined up right, which we are. We're going to feel and make sure we didn't unplug any wires, which we didn't. Now we'll come back to our choke side with our little nut. We'll put this over our choke. Tighten it down. that okay that's a done deal now I'm just gonna look up under here and make sure no wires get unhooked and nothing's being pinched and all the research wires are still on nothing loosened up I wanted to fall off on me Okay. I'll put a little wedge in here. Don't forget to put this in while everything's loosened up so it won't go in otherwise. Okay. Now your short screws with the washers, they go up in these front holes up here. set down get it started in go uh, snug don't tighten it yet because it's got to be able to move it around to get the rest of these in swing over here get this side find your screwdriver you drop That's why you lose it loose, because it's just plastic and uh, it bends and flexes around. So you gotta be able to find the hole. Now you've got two screws back here, one here, one on the other side, and you're done. A 
wiggle that around till you find where it goes in. Put the other one on and you're done. Next thing is just to test it out, which like I said, you have to start your sled and you'll see the red light on your helmet come on. I'll do that for you guys here in just a second. Okay, I just run in and grab my helmet and start it up to test it out. All these heated shield helmets, okay, they have a red light on the side. So I'll just show you guys that this is all set and working. That helped you guys if anyone has any questions go ahead and just ask in the comment section i'll try to be as quick as i can to answer them for you and uh if you like the video smash that like button please subscribe to the channel helps get it going here i'm gonna have a lot of good diy stuff for you guys like this i do pretty much everything myself from you know side by side stuff snowmobiles vehicles you know putting roofs on i build winch mounts and wire and stereo systems i mean we get into everything home furnace repair i'll teach you guys everything i can and uh hopefully it saves you guys some money but i think i'm gonna fire my slide up and go for a rip here so i appreciate you guys stopping in hit that like button and we'll see you on the next one